United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has once again condemned the Hamas attack on Israel. He has also criticized the high number of civilian casualties that the Israeli army offensive is causing in Gaza. There are violations by Hamas when they have human uh, shields. But uh, when one looks at the number of civilians that were killed with the military operations, there is something that is clearly wrong. The highest number of killing of children by any of the actors in all the conflicts that uh, uh, we witness is the maximum in the hundreds. We had in a few days in Gaza thousands and thousands of children killed. That was U.S. Secretary General Antonio Guterres speaking earlier. I'm joined now by Mark Weller. He is a professor of international law at the University of Cambridge. He's also served as a U.N. mediation expert. Mr. Weller, it's good to have you with us. You are aware, like many, that numerous NGOs have accused Israel of committing war crimes by attacking civilian areas. Now, Israel says it's hitting Hamas military targets, and that it has warned civilians and told them to go south to avoid being hit, and yet we know civilians have been killed. What does international law say about this? International law demands that any party to a conflict must apply what is called the principle of distinction. You must always be able specifically to target the combatants of the other side and keep safe as much as possible the civilians. What the UN Secretary General uh, has just said is that on the face of it, uh, if Israel has lost, let's say, 30 or 40 of its service members in this conflict, and on the other hand, 10,000 civilians have died, that the balance uh, that should exist between protection of civilians and military gain seems to be out of hand in this instance. We know that Israel has used the right to self-defense uh, to justify the attacks that we're seeing. Many Western countries have also supported this. How far is the right of self-defense applicable? The right of self-defense applies. It is clear that the attack of the 7th of October launched by Hamas entitles Israel to respond even through the use of force. But that use of force must be targeted specifically at Hamas and its fighters, at the threat of further terrorism, which Israel is entitled to remove if necessary forcibly. The fact that Hamas itself uh, will have committed a grave war crime through the atrocities of the 7th of October does not mean that the civilians in Palestine have lost their status as people under the protection of humanitarian law. That means that Israel must not undertake strikes against targets uh, where the civilian injury is excessive in relation to the military gain that this kind of attack brings. And that, I think, is the principal criticism, that in this case, even if it is alleged that uh, there are uh, Hamas operatives hiding under buildings or someone else, somewhere else, uh, that that doesn't relieve Israel of the obligation still to minimize damage to civilians, even if that means it will be more difficult for their soldiers to engage the Hamas fighters. But if it is true that Hamas is embedding itself in areas that have that are densely populated with civilians, then any attack is going to inevitably result in civilian deaths, right? Most uh, advanced militaries, and this does certainly include Israel, uh, actually have targeters, lawyers, who sit and consider whether any particular attack is lawful. And the balance in each case has to be made. If there, even if there is some sort of Hamas infrastructure under a particular target, uh, we're not c quite persuaded that that is always the case when buildings are targeted. Sometimes it looks like retaliation. But even if that is the case, that doesn't relieve Israel of the duty of protection of civilians. Mm -hmm. It can't just say that these are human shields. They are not willing human shields who mm -hmm. place themselves in this danger. They are civilians who do not lose their entitlement to protection, or at least uh, Israel has to ensure that the damage to civilians, so-called incidental damage or injury, is not out of proportion 
to the military gain that any particular operation brings. And that yeah. seems to be something that becomes problematic as this conflict continues and as the actions of the military uh, by, on, on the side of Israel do seem to be disproportionately affecting civilians. And, you know, what you say there, you're, you're, you're speaking about proportionality. We know that the Geneva Conventions say that warfare must be guided by the principles of proportionality. Can we speak of proportionality with more than 10,500 Palestinian deaths if we are to believe what the Gaza Health Authority is saying? Yeah, I think few people doubt that there are extraordinary numbers of civilian deaths. And that is why the UN Secretary General has pointed to this imbalance uh, between the alleged military benefit that Israel claims it is pursuing in any particular attack and the evidently disproportionate civilian injuries that result. And that is one of the principal criticisms of Israel, and I think it's correct to be critical. And the other one is to deprive uh, civilian concentrations of that which is necessary for their survival, uh, depriving uh, the civilians of food, of water, of hospitals, of energy, uh, cannot really be justified. Israel says, well, otherwise Hamas might take over some of those supplies. But the answer to that is that the RC, the UN, or other agencies could safeguard and ensure that only mm -hmm. civilians benefit. And um, the present practice of displacing a million people into an area that itself is subject to attack, mm -hmm. and then denying humanitarian supplies to those civilians which you have driven out, uh, that is also uh, very difficult to justify. Mm -hmm. Earlier, I spoke to Hin Kadari, a Palestinian journalist in Gaza City, and I asked her to describe the situation there right now. Um, I'm in the middle of, I'm in the center of the Gaza City right now. It's dark. Um, all I hear is explosions. I really don't know where these explosions are, but I assume they are in the north, northern area of the Gaza Strip. We're talking about Beit Lahia. Jabal, yeah, in these areas, I can see, like, thunderstorm, but this is not thunder. This is, like, an explosion um, uh, erupting. Um, uh, the situation today has been um, uh, catastrophic, to be honest. We have been uh, listening to a lot of appeals from different citizens, calling that they have been injured in different areas in the Gaza Strip, and no one is, is, is being able to to rescue them. No one's being able to go and help them. Uh, we got appeals from people in schools, people uh, that have been, uh, like, their houses have been bombed, people were under the rubble, no civil defense, no ambulances were able to to rescue them or to transport them, uh, transport them out to the hospital. Um, it's dark right now, uh, it's night, and everyone in the Gaza Strip, there are 2.3 million Palestinians in the Gaza Strip right now, hmm. uh, hating the fact that it's night right now and it's dark, and there's a lot of explosions happening right now. Hmm. All right, for more now, we want to cross over to journalist Sami Sokol in Jerusalem. Sami, what are you hearing from the Israel Defense Forces about their operation in and around Gaza City? Yeah, well, I can tell you that the Israeli military is very content uh, with the progress of this uh, campaign. Uh, they're talking about very good uh, cooperation between the ground forces and the air force and the artillery. And uh, at the same time, you have both uh, regular army and reserve duty uh, soldiers in, in big numbers. And, and they're saying that things are coming along smoothly. True that they face a resistance. Uh, no one is, has been surrendering. They haven't seen any uh, Hamas fighters surrendering. But they say that in all the different battles that they've had so far, uh, they have been winning. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're now uh, exposing also uh, tunnels. And the IDF spokesperson has exposed um, uh, recordings and evidence. So they say that Hamas has, is using ambulances and different uh, facilities for their fighters. You say that the Israeli military is content with where they are right now in, in Gaza. What about the Israeli public, Sami? Are, are they satisfied with the way that their government is handling this conflict? I think when it comes to the, to the Gaza Strip, 
uh, the, the public here in Israel is, is definitely uh, supportive of an aggressive uh, approach. And uh, even uh, Benny Gantz, who kind of like was in the opposition and is now in the war cabinet, uh, he's in the same line together with Netanyahu. And this is kind of like the, the bulk, the majority of the uh, Israeli uh, public. Uh, and uh, what they want to see is the kind of destruction of Hamas. Uh, they're talking about uh, eliminating the threat and uh, they don't want to be stopped. And, and therefore all the talk about uh, ceasefires is something that they see as something that could threaten the forces uh, on the ground. Sammy, there are reports that Qatar is trying to mediate for a possible release of some of the hostages. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, the reports are, uh, we have different kinds of reports. We have also reports uh, coming out of Qatar. We have reports coming out of Egypt. Uh, also, the Egyptians have uh, some uh, proposals. Mm -hmm. uh, according to some reports, we're talking about the release of 50. Uh, another report talks about the release of uh, 12 uh, hostages, half of them American. Uh, and, and we're talking about a, a ceasefire of 72 hours. But I can tell you that uh, the Israeli military and the Israeli government, uh, they're not interested in a ceasefire. And they've made it very clear in statements this evening. Uh, the IDF spokesperson said that they're not interested. Netanyahu said that there is no ceasefire. Uh, so uh, at this point of time, it's difficult to see that this is actually going uh, to happen. Journalist Sammy Sokol with the latest from Jerusalem tonight. Sammy, as always, thank you.